Hello, welcome to the non-fiction world. On the origin of species by Charles Darwin, the father of evolution as we know him, if you like zoology, naturalism and traveling and you want all of that in one package, this book is definitely for you. We have all obviously heard about Darwin's ideas and we have studied them at school, but something about reading it through his own words was very impressive to me. I actually didn't know that the theory of evolution existed before Darwin and he was just the one to reinvent it and supply it with proofs and facts. So in this book Darwin claims that he actually came to the conclusion that all the species have one unifying ancestor even though previously he mistakenly thought that all the species have different ancestors. The appearance and behavior of animals and living beings is actually very much changeable and we can see that through domestication of animals which we have been doing for years at this point so the variability actually does exist however the natural selection works in the favor and interest of the animals themselves trying to adapt them to the changeable environment. Mutations are actually spontaneous and accidental and they get fixed because they get obviously passed on to the next generations by the survivors and if there is a sufficient amount of those modifications then new breeds and new species appear which I just love that. I love reading about nature and its laws and people that are actually attentive enough to notice these things so to me this was definitely a very interesting book to read. So the next one is The Secret Barrister, The Stories of Law and How It's Broken. And as you can imagine, the author stayed anonymous, it's The Secret Barrister. And the lawyer actually talks about the stories of the criminal justice system and how it works and how it sometimes fails to work. And the stories are directly from the courtroom. I am fascinated by the work of lawyers. I love watching films on the meta, listening to podcasts. So to me, discovering this book felt like an actual treasure. For example, he told a story about a girl that was abused for years by her boyfriend and one time he abused her on her birthday and the police found out and she had multiple injuries a lot of them but because of the fact that her medical record was lost and other details the abuser just walked free he just did so if you want to know more about the criminal justice system than the media and entertainment industry shows us and if you want to know about the lawyers and other criminal justice system workers then I would definitely recommend you reading this book. So the third one is Eric Byrne, Games People Play and the Psychology of Human Relationships. Eric Byrne is a Canadian psychologist and the creator of the transactional analysis. It's actually a very interesting book. It describes a game creating human behavior that manipulates people around us to do what we actually want them to do. It's actually very scary reading this book and understanding how much of it is actually true. The psychologist offers us three types of human behavior or three ego states, parent, child, and adult. Parent is obviously when a human being acts like his parents and copies their behavior, pretty classic. Child is the type of behavior that we are born with and adult is the rational and logical type. And all the relationships you have and all the games you play with people around you depend on the ego state that you are in currently. There are also different types of games you can play. There are also different lessons you need to learn in order to stop playing those games and the author thinks that quitting those games is the road to the actual connection and intimacy with another human being. Next one is Eric Byrne, What Do You Say After You Say Hello? Another amazing book by this MD. In this book, alongside with discussing the transactional analysis, he also introduces the concept of scripts or the script analysis or early decisions made unconsciously as to how life shall be lived. The main point of this analysis is that our fate is formed when we are just preschoolers. So at six years old, our fate, uh, our fate is programmed and after that, we live the whole life according to those scenarios. By studying the behavior of a preschooler, you can already determine whether he's gonna be a winner or a loser in life. And it's definitely one of the best books in the field of psychology and it describes and explores the psychology behind human destiny and it's just a very interesting book to read.
fifth and final is How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. This self-help book has saved me at one point. It's a psychological bestseller that focuses around the fact that fear and anxiety and stress have ruined millions of lives over the years around the world. And there are examples of people whose lives have been destroyed by stress and who have made a step overcoming that stress and worry and made their lives so much better and just started living to their fullest. For example, the author talks about a woman who suffered cancer and decided to travel around the world for the last months of her life and that stress-free life just cured her from her disease. When I read the book, I remember it just changed me to my core. It's one of those books that make you feel like nothing really is that important and letting go is just going to benefit you. One of the best techniques that I picked up from this book and use it to this day is asking yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen? And it just sets every priority straight. So the author offers us a three-step approach, which is like, get your facts straight, and understand what you're worrying about and what you actually know and then analyze those facts and come up with the options you have and the third is make a decision and stick to it another technique is to put a stop loss on things that make you stress in life almost like a time limit so you give yourself a limited amount of time to worry about things and after that time is up you will kind of move on and i don't know if i actually agree with that i think it depends on the size of the problem you're having I don't know. And the other technique is to take the criticism for a compliment because the more critique you're getting means you're doing more things right. And I actually saw a video on this very book years ago and I loved the example that they gave, which was like, imagine that you are on the stage and you're giving a speech and someone is hitting on you from the audience. You have to understand that you are the one standing on the stage and that person wasn't even invited to give the speech on the stage in the first place which makes you kind of cooler than them because you are actually doing something. They're just sitting in the audience hating on someone. I will actually try to find that video and put the link in the description down below because it is phenomenal, just like this book. I love it. It's definitely worth reading. This is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend. And if you have any suggestions for me for the future, please share them. I'm very open and I really look forward to hearing from you. Um. <laughs> this book is definitely very